What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate it. Today, we have another Game Hunting Gone Right video. It's been a while since we did one, but the beginning of the year was super, super busy. And uh, two weeks ago, I was able to get to one of the big cities around me and do some game hunting. And I also flew out to California for a funeral and did some game hunting there and uh, got quite a bit of collection I would like to show you guys today. Now, we have everything from PlayStation 2 to Xbox One. We have a Switch game, and of course, we have a lot of Atari games because I love collecting Atari games. In fact, we have a complete inbox fishing derby Atari game, which is always fun. I'm not necessarily one, let me just let that drop. I'm not necessarily one that looks for complete inbox. I just prefer the game because it's not like I look at the uh, crummy black and white manuals and have nostalgia for those. But either way, I'm happy to get it. So, Hope you guys enjoy these games. You've probably played some of the modern ones, some of the Atari ones. Maybe you haven't, but maybe I will interest you in playing them. As always, enjoy the video. Armor Ambush for the Atari 2600. This is a better version of combat. It looks better. It plays better. The cool thing about this game is that you can actually drop mines in the field that your enemy can run over and explode. Downside of this game is that there is no AI in this game. This is meant to be played for two players. There's no solo play in the game, which you notice I am currently doing in this video because I don't have any friends. So I'm just showing you what the game looks like and it plays like. Maybe one day you and a buddy can get together and actually play this the right way. 7 out of 10. Bermuda Triangle for the Atari 2600. This game is a mix between Sea Quest and Defender. You're in a submarine and you're fighting off squids and sharks while you're trying to collect relics on the seafloor. This is a fun game. It's one of the better looking games on the Atari 2600. I give this a solid 8 out of 10. Dark Cavern for the Atari 2600. Now this game was also released on the television under the name Night Stalker. In this game you are stuck in a maze and there are robots chasing you. You have to avoid these robots and pick up the gun icons. Each gun has six bullets that you can defeat the robots with. That's it. That's the game. It's kind of like Pac-Man but you're shooting people. I enjoy it. It gets uh, fun and it gets nerve-wracking, kind of like Pac-Man where you make one wrong move and realize, oh, I'm boned, I just trapped myself. 7 out of 10. This is Fishing Derby for the Atari 2600. This is a really fun game. I am partial to fishing, so of course I would think that. In this game, you drop your line in the water, and depending how far down you go, that is what makes the difference on points. If you get a fish that's really close to the surface, you get very little points. If you get a fish at the very bottom, you get huge points reeling them in. But the whole time you have a shark going back and forth and that shark will eat your fish and rob you of all points. So you have to be strategic and only pull it up when the shark is going away from you. Great game. Solid 
10 out of 10. Warm War 1 for the Atari 2600. In this game you are a tank and you are trying to destroy giant worms. It's a top-down scrolling shoot 'em up If you destroy the pagoda, you clear the screen. There's 99 waves of worms starting with 1 and ending with 6. This game is fun in the beginning and then it gets repetitive very quickly. I give it a 5 out of 10. Xavius for the Atari 7800. Now there are better and worse versions of this game. This one sits right in the middle of the pack in my opinion. In this game you are a spaceship and you can shoot flying enemies or you can bomb stationary enemies on the ground. Nowadays there's nothing amazing about this game but back in the day it was a pretty dang cool game. You just keep shooting enemies and progressing through the levels. It's uh, typical of a game of this time but it's a fun game. I give it a 7 out of 10. Kill Switch for the Xbox. This is a first person slash third person shooter. It's kind of a predecessor to Gears of War where you have to do cover based shooting. And because of that, I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of cover based shooting. I don't like Gears of War. I like to run and gun, not have to hide all the time. This is a slow game. Probably good back in 2000, 2001 or whenever it was released. I give it a five out of 10. Future Tactics for the PlayStation 2. Now, this game looks great, and it plays really well, in my opinion. Except for when you need to attack your enemies. The problem with this game is that the crosshair is constantly moving, and you have to slow it down or speed it up and get it in the perfect... It is a pain in the butt to try to get on people, and I don't like it at all. This game would have been a great game, except for that stupid... Crosshair, I give it a 2 out of 10. We have Battlefield 2042 for the Xbox One. Now, I don't like the online play of Battlefield or Call of Duty, so you're thinking, well, idiot, why'd you buy it? It was like four bucks at my local Target. I can't pass that up. I played a couple rounds. It was fun. I got $4 worth of entertainment. Heck, I bought a copy of Anthem for two bucks 
after the servers were shut down. So that uh, says a lot about me. It's fun. It looks good. It shoots. Not my style. The people that love it, probably 10 out of 10. Me, 4 out of 10 because there's no single player. Middle Earth Shadow of War. Now this is the sequel to Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. And in these games, you can either stealth attack or you can go out and attack. I'm not a fan of these games. I got Shadow of Mordor when it first came out and I got this game hoping that it might have changed. But it is very button combo dependent where you have to push a thousand buttons at once to do any stupid thing. And every little thing has a combo and it just gets so annoying. And I tried playing these games. I just don't like them. Personally, this game is a 5 out of 10. Metroid Prime Remastered for the Switch. I love this game. I loved it first when it was on the GameCube. I love all the other reiterations. This one looks very nice. I'm thoroughly enjoying it as I'm playing through. It's Metroid. I love Metroid. This is the first first person version of Metroid. Nowadays I enjoy it. When it first came out, I didn't really wasn't really a fan of it, but it's it's grown on me and I thoroughly enjoy playing it. This is a 9 out of 10. So there you have it. There are the games that I've collected in the last couple of weeks that I wanted to show off and brag about online, I guess. Anyway, what'd you guys think? Have you had a chance to play any of these games? Did any of this footage pique your interest in playing any games? Let me know. Feel free to leave a comment. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. Share it or subscribe if you're not. I would appreciate that as well. As always, you can get a hold of me at retrobendgaming at gmail.com. You guys... Take some time to play a video game this week. It doesn't have to be any one of these, just a video game in general. But whether you do or don't, be good people, be good to those around you, and keep on gaming.